If you've just had somebody you care about die, especially if they've died suddenly, then you might have a lot of big emotions. So in this video, we're going to talk about that and how to navigate that process so it's a little bit less painful. So somebody recently shared with me how they got a shock because somebody they had known for a long time died suddenly and hadn't told them. So they had no warning. Now, if we have somebody that we care about and they die, but we have some idea that they're sick or, you know, things are not going well and we have some time to adjust to the idea that they're going to go, that can be less painful because it's less shocking for our nervous system, for our body. But if you're in a position where somebody has died suddenly and you didn't have any warning about it, um, it's going to be very, very uncomfortable for the body. Right? Whenever we experience a shock, it's a sudden change and the body doesn't know quite how to adjust to that change in a short period, a big change in a short period of time. So one of the first things that is helpful to do is to go, oh, how can I be a little bit more gentle with myself at this point in time? Because my body has gone through such a big change in a short period of time. So thinking about, starting to think about the ways if you struggle with self-care and you st struggle with self-compassion and gentleness, can you be a little bit more gentle somehow with yourself? So that's the first thing I want to say. Now, the other thing that can happen is we can have a lot of very big feelings. So two common things that can happen is, especially if you've had no warning that this is going to happen, is it's normal to feel angry. Why did this happen? This is so unfair. Um, I can't believe whatever the circumstances were around this person's death, right? So knowing that there might be a part of you that's very, very angry and it can be confusing when you also realise, oh, but I'm also really sad that this person has died. I'm really sad that this person has left my life and I can no longer talk to them or hug them or whatever the case may be. Now, as you listen to this, please remember again to be gentle with yourself. So if you're finding it hard to watch this video, just pause. You can walk away. You can always come back to it. That's the beauty of YouTube, right? You can pause anything here. So if you are feeling what might feel like a diametrically opposed emotions, you're not going nuts. <laughs> you don't have to try and like bring them all together into this happy mush of like coping and dealing. What is way more useful is to realise that all of us have different parts of us. This is something that I learned through the work of Dick Schwartz and IFS, Internal Family Systems, is we have all these different parts and sometimes they're competing for attention. So what is helpful is to go, oh, there's a part of me. You can use this language. There's a part of me that feels angry right now. And that's okay. There's a part of me that feels really sad right now. And that's okay. And you may have half a dozen other things that you're feeling. And that's also okay. What is helpful is to give each of those parts of you a voice at the table, a seat at the table, so to speak, and let yourself intern either with someone else. I often do this with clients, but you could do it with, you know, your partner, your um, adult children, not young children, adult children, <laughs> uh, your best friend, your therapist, another person who's good at listening and just let the angry part of you, if we use this, this example, the angry part of you talk and just express how that part of you is feeling and let the sad part talk and probably cry <laughs> um, without trying to fix or change them, just letting them be, letting them express how those parts of you are feeling. So we're layering in the gentleness. We're also layering in the uh, awareness and acceptance. Oh, there are multiple parts of me that are feeling different things. And I don't have to fix or solve or change or integrate any of it. I just have to let each part of me be. And what's going to happen? Basically what you want. Here's what I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you want. You want to feel better. Ultimately, beyond all of the circumstances, all of us, when we ha are in enduring hardship or going through some significant struggle, what we really want is we want to feel better. You can't change the fact that this person has died. <sighs> but deep down, the wisest part of you is like, if I could just find some way, 
some way to cope to and eventually feel some sort of sense of peace to feel okay there's some part of you that that's what it wants that's what you want even if that might seem totally crazy right now because you might be overwhelmed and full of emotions and like what this what is this chick talking about she doesn't understand grief or loss at all that's because you're, you're feeling a lot of emotions. So just know that ultimately what you want, what we all want when we're enduring hardship is we want to feel better. And what will help you feel better is to be gentle, to notice that there are parts of you that might have very different things to say and might be feeling very different things and give them an opportunity to uh, say what they need to say. And they might need, the anger might need to talk about how it's feeling 12 times. And the sadness might need to cry 15 times. Who knows? But giving them space to do that while you're gentle with yourself. And here's the other thing I want to say, is that part of being gentle with yourself might mean that you need to distract or dissociate or somehow remove yourself from the focus of the hardship. So if you get to the point where you're like, I'm done with crying, my head hurts, I cannot cry anymore, then it's a great opportunity to think about what resources you have that can make you feel better. So when I need to feel better, I watch videos of puppy dogs doing cute things. And it makes me temporarily feel distracted and focused on something that makes me feel better. Does it make this person come back into my life? No. But do I have to be feeling my big feelings? Do you have to be feeling your big feelings 24 seven? No, you're human. There's only so much that your nervous system and your body can cope with. So gentleness, feeling your feelings. And when it feels like it's all too hard, <laughs> then it is totally reasonable, legitimate and sensible to distract or dissociate by doing something, ideally something that's not going to cause you harm. So ideally don't go and drink a whole bottle of scotch. <laughs> but obviously, you know, if that's the, the best thing that you can reach for, then that's what you're going to reach for. But thinking about the things that will genuinely distract you and help you feel better, even if it only feels temporary. Is it a walk along the beach? Is it um, going and watching uh, something, some comedy on Netflix and just binging your way through a comedy series and laughing and laughing and laughing until you realise you're crying and then you're laughing again. Great. So any resource that makes you feel better, so then you can oscillate between the two as necessary. You can feel your feelings and then you can distract with something that feels better and you can feel your feelings and you can distract with something that feels better. Because remember, somewhere in here, you still have to do the whole rest of your life. You have to do the other things that are required with being a human and being alive. <laughs> you still need to shower. You still need to eat. You still need to maybe care for other people. You probably need to work. So doing the things that you need to do in your life to still keep functioning, but letting yourself feel the feelings, because if you don't and you shove them down, that has consequences later. So please feel whatever you're capable of feeling. And when it feels too overwhelming, distract with flowers and unicorns and whatever you need to have you genuinely smile and feel hopeful about life. I hope this was helpful. If you um, did find it helpful, you can like it. You can share it with somebody else who you feel uh, might need this message at this point in time. Um, and... Be gentle with that precious heart, okay?